Damn, that's more important. So good. Trenary, sorry, that's way up. It's time for Lumberjacks! Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Gas Guzzler, lifts gas and oils from land, vehicles, and tools. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. We're up here in Barrie, Ontario, on the shores of Kempenfelt Bay for the Great Canadian Beaver Festival. This very successful Central Ontario event has been around for a couple of years, but this is the first year they're hosting a lumberjack competition. We have 20 men and 10 women from Eastern Canada and throughout Northeast United States competing for over $10,000 in prize money. Hi, I'm Bill Deeb with my co-host, Lumberjack Sport Analyst, Rod Cumberland. Rod, this week we're covering the 0 to 81 Modified Chainsaw as a springboard chop and the women's single buck. But the one I'm really looking forward to is a double buck. We haven't seen much double bucking this year. Not yet this year, but Bill, I'll tell you, if any place to see it, here's the place because JP Mercy, Dave Jewett, world record holders, and they're sawing up a storm this year. But don't count out the, guy, the likes of Melvin Lentz and his son Jason. Um, also, Bucket Waterfield, he drug up Mike Sullivan, so there's some really good competitors in that event. Now, we're also covering the Springboard Chop. We've got a class field of competitors here, a lot of great axemen. That one is going to be a tough one to call. Tough to call. You've got guys like uh, Melvin Lentz been chopping for, what, four decades now? Uh, Mike Sullivan, also a really good Springboard Cutter, but Dave Jewett, he's here, and in my books, he's the guy to beat. As well. Well, it's great to be here on the shores of Kempenfelt Bay for the Kempenfelt Rotary Club's Great Canadian Beaver Festival and Race. This year they included a lumberjack competition. What could be more Canadian than lumberjacks and beavers? We're heading into the springboard chop. We're going to be showing you the top four heats. His first heat is actually a heat of three competitors. We have two from New York State, Matt Marks and Paul Feniger, taking on veteran competitor from Quebec, J.P. Mercier. Well, JP, we know him as a sawing expert. He's, uh, that's where his expertise lies. But obviously, yeah, to be a well all round lumberjack, you have to be good at the axe events as well. So JP's going to try to give these lads a race for their, a run for their money. Well, it's nice to have a cross of Americans and competitors at this competition. Some of the best in Canada and the United States. Both guys, or all three guys, are already into their first boards, going into the notches. Paul Feniger and Matt Marks, look, they've got a little bit of a jump on JP. JP struggles to get up on his first board. I competed against Matt Marks a couple years ago in New York State. He's actually a young up-and-coming competitor. I guess he's been at it now for probably six or seven years in the pro league. And Mar Matt Marks is doing a great job here in the springboard chop. We're going to see Matt Marks a little bit later on in the hot saw, but right now his springboard game is what is first and foremost. J.P. Mercier trying to hang tough for the two younger fellows, although Paul Feniger now into his 40s. He's got a good game going as well, but I think Matt Marks might be the guy to catch from Rochester, New York. Looks like Feniger's running out of gas a little bit. J.P. Mercier keeping the pace up. Uh, Feniger might have a hard block. That might be what's slowing him down a little bit, but Matt Marks... Way out in front, he's going to be making his turn to the second side and trying to drive this off. Marks is putting some slicers in. He misses his first hit there. He may have to chip things out here. Paul Feniger makes his turn over the backside. Going to give Marks a run for his money. Matt Marks wins the first heat of the springboard chop in just over one minute. J.P. Mercy right behind him, and Paul Feniger putting in the last few slices on this hard block. Uh, Matt, pretty good climb there. You know, uh, your, your notches fairly flawless, yeah, beating Paul Feniger and J.P. Mercy. And, uh, uh, just tell me about your climb. Um, first pocket was great, yeah, four hit pocket, board was solid. Second pocket, so you can push it, third hit, miss hit, terrible. Hard, I had to put a good four extra hits, so I'm not sure, probably eight to ten hits on the top. It really knocked it down with a, with a smaller wood on top. You really have to climb fast. It's all about climb, so. A, a, a nice block up top. It came apart nicely. Oh, beautiful block. They're supplying some great Aspen up here in Barrie. Well, heat number one's got a one minute point one four set by Matt Marks in that first heat. This next heat, another heat of three. We got Donald Lambert, Jason Lentz, and Dave Engasser in this heat. 
And we've got Jason, Jason Lentz coming the whole way up from West Virginia, and, and we thought down. Melvin Lentz would be in tone with him, but apparently he had passport trouble, so Jason's here on his own. And Jason, is, one of his claims to fame actually is being a fourth-generation Lumberjack Sport competitor in North America. His father, Melvin, grew up actually out in Oregon, and he is here in Barrie, Ontario, one of the guys to beat, a big, strong, powerful man. Don Lambert is going to try and hang with him, along with Dave Angasser. Don Lambert, no slouch at all in the springboard shop, and he will stay with Jason as long as he can. Uh, here's Dave Angasser up on his board. These guys are all up together uh, working on their second board hole. All three guys now on their second board, and there. it looks like Donald Lambert's notch is way too wide there. Nice tight pocket there by Jason. He jams his board in. Donald staying, staying right there with him. Jams his board in. Good solid board. Bounces up there, and he's into his block. Just a couple of strokes behind Jason. They're both up there together. Looks like Jason's taking his time when he's swinging here, using his power rather than speed. Don Lambert knows he's going to use all of his speed, try to chop this block as fast as he can. He's into the small wood already. Big, strong Jason Lenz from West Virginia. Diana, West Virginia, taking on Donald Lambert from St. Gilles, Quebec. Jason looks like he's already finishing things off on the front side. Donald makes his turn. Jason's right with him. Jason's slicing things off, and he lowers the time to beat in the springboard chop down to 56.03. Yeah, you made a decision to go on that first board. Uh, a little bit apprehensive, a little bit concerned about it? Uh, a little bit, but I've uh, been doing it for a little while, so four hit hole normally holds me. Now, uh, when you got up on the second board, you were really able to spread your wings and uh, wail away at that block, so you've got to be really happy with the second board. Yeah, definitely. It was a six hit board hole. I normally try to go four and six to allow me a good platform to stand on up top. Well, we got two springboard shots now in the books. We got two more to come after the break. Jason Lenz from West Virginia is leading the way with a 5603. What a spectacular place for a lumberjack competition with a great international field of world-class competitors from all over North America. This is the fourth annual Great Canadian Beaver Race and Festival held down at Heritage Park here in downtown Barrie. And it's a charity event hosted by uh, Kempenfelt Rotary Club, which is one of three Rotary Clubs here in Barrie. And we launch 8,000 rubber beavers, so it's like a rubber ducky race, only with rubber beavers. And each beaver corresponds with a race ticket that somebody has purchased for $10. So uh, if your race beaver finishes first, you win $10,000. So this festival could not happen without support from its sponsors. And we have many great sponsors that uh, stepped up to the plate this year, including Downtown Barry. And Downtown Barry is a business association that supports the Downtown Barry merchants. And uh, it's very supportive of the charity work that Rotary does and so they were one of the major sponsors this year and of course because uh, the Great Canadian Beaver Racing Festival happens in downtown Barrie it was a really great match uh, for the two organizations to come together. Well we had a couple of springboard chop heats just before the commercial break and we had Jason Lenz from Diana West Virginia set a time of 56 seconds followed by Matt Marks with just over one minute. This next heat we got Nathan Waterfield taking on Dave Jewett, two guys from upstate New York. Dave Jewett obviously the top of his game right now. Nathan Waterfield uh, affectionately called by a lot of the other competitors Bucket Waterfield. He's a great competitor but I've just never seen him pull it all together yet in a springboard chop. Hopefully he can do it here and if there's any time to do it it's chopping against David Jewett. Well Dave Jewett's an accomplished champion. He's won hundreds of competitions all over the world and traveling in lumberjack sports. Both guys stroking, uh, going stroke for stroke jam their boards in at almost the exact same time on their second boards going for their second notches. That is stroke for stroke right now. Uh, Bucket's really driving Driving that axe deep, and he's got a nice four-stroke pocket. So if he gets up on that, he's going to gain a little bit of an advantage here over Dave Jewett. A lot of power for Nathan Waterfield there. Dave Jewett on his board. Looks like Bucket is about a stroke and a half ahead of Jewett at this point. And a CEO, well, it's a nine-inch block at the top, so you know this is going to be a sub-one-minute chop. If they do everything right, they can actually lower this time. A bit of a knot there for, for Waterfield. Jewett making his way through the block as well. Looks like Waterfield's got an edge. He's ready to make his turnover to the backside. Jewett's a little bit behind at this time. He's got to actually put some drivers in and switch around, but Bucket's putting in his last few drivers. He's going to knock it off of here, 48.7. And Dave Jewett just behind him by five or six strokes of the axe. Uh, Nathan, that was an outstanding climb. I mean, you know, you're happy with that for sure, but uh, just tell me about having a good climb and letting yourself down up top. Yeah, I was up pretty quick. The poles were nice and crispy, the four and four up, and um, I opened the block a little low, and then uh, it seemed like every hit I took, the axe was sort of grabby in the wood and uh, just couldn't keep the pace up. So not quite the time that I wished to put up, but... 
uh, still good enough to win. So, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a tough crowd here. You know, there's a lot of good springboard choppers here, and obviously your game's come a long way. Yeah, no, I've been cutting springboards pretty well now for, for a little while. And, um, yeah, just on a nine-inch wood like that, I, you know, really hope to put a time in the 32nd range. But, yeah, I think it was in the 48, so still a little slow for my liking. Hi, I'm Mike Sullivan. I'm a self-employed lumberjack. Um, from Colebrook, Connecticut, USA. Okay, just check it. Cecil Starr, I'm a utility forester, and I'm also uh, getting into farming, and I uh, live in Lake Darimple, Ontario. All right. Well, Nathan Waterfield is still one more heat to go. He's hoping that his 48 seconds will hold up. He was hoping for something in the 30s, but realistically, 48 in this field, pretty good. We got Cecil taking on Mike Sullivan in this last heat. The G-Oil man from Winstead, Connecticut, made his way up here to Barrie, Ontario. Doing a good job. Mike's always competitive in the springboard chop. Slam is boarded. We've got a good race here right now between Cecil and Mike. Looks like Mike's board fell to the ground. He had to bend over to pick it up to slam that board into the notch. Cecil Starr working on his. A little bit sloppy there. Trying to get a nice, good, deep pocket. Mike Sullivan double jam with his board into the notch. A little bit of a slip there getting up as well. Cecil still having a hard time with his notch. Mike's up. He's got a great advantage here right now. He's got to pick up the pace. He wants to catch that time that Nathan Waterfield set in the last heat. 48.7 seconds is the time to be. Cecil, Cecil looks a little bit apprehensive on that board up there. Not quite swinging with the power he wants. I guess his board is a little bit shaky. Mike Sullivan's got to be happy with his board. He's wailing away. He's not going to take down Nathan Waterfield. He's looking for a second or third place finish at this point. Cecil Starr's got a bone of a block. He's having a hard time wailing in and getting a big face out of this thing. Doing a great job, though, just with the power he has. Mike Sullivan's going to be switching around. He's going to be driving it off here momentarily. Mike Sullivan putting some drivers in, breaks it off in just over a minute, 101.1. Cecil Starr having a hard time finishing things off. One more stroke of the axe, and Cecil Starr finishes it as well. Uh, nice notches. You've got to be happy with your notches, especially your first one. It was clean and fast. Yeah, the first one was great. The second one was good, but it is, this wood here, and if you noticed, a lot of competitors today kind of squished a little on them. It's, it's firm wood, but it seems to be squishy. So it was kind of a small pocket, but it should have held. It was a little squishy, which makes you cramp up to the pole a little bit cost you on the top but no, I'm happy with it it was good now tell me about your backside you take uh, you take one lower one higher is that just to open up and free the wood it, well that's a, that's to open up and get my handle in there if you just start slicing and you're just slicing down and you don't have any room your handle starts hitting so if I go low high a chip comes out it's kind of like an up hit but it's not it's a down down hit you still get a chip and now you got handle room Good springboard tips there from Mike Sullivan. No strangers to the leaderboard, Don Lambert and Dave Jewett, but the guy that finally puts a great chop together here on Lumberjack, Nathan Waterfield, leads a field. Closed captioning is brought to you by Insect Defend Patch, deep free protection from biting insects. Here we are at the Lumberjack competition up here in Barrie, Ontario, the Great Canadian Beaver Festival and Race. We are heading into the next event, which is the 0 to 81 CC modified chainsaws. These are basically stock saws that are modified with some extension pipes, some carburetor adjustments, and maybe a little bit of alcohol in the fuel as well. Anything like that, of course, to give you an advantage because you are limited by the uh, upper levels of CCs. 81 here, of course. JP Mercy get into this sport with chainsaw, so we expect to see him put up a good cut here in the 0 to 81. In total, we're showing you two heats of two. It's three cuts, all within six inches, just like the modified chainsaws or the open hot saw. JP Mercy into the wood really quick. John Reeder right behind him. JP Mercy struggles on his third cut, still wins the heat. JP, we don't see the 0 to 81 uh, modified saw too often. Just tell me uh, what kind of machine are you running here today? Uh, I'm running like it's a 72 cc's motor, like built up with methanol, bigger carburetor, so uh, you can use it in the wood. Now, uh, the temperature's a little bit colder here today. Uh, is there any uh, kind of uh, modifications you make for cold temperatures? It's not cold enough to make any modification on it. Usually in a colder weather, we're gonna, we would like to run a little bit richer. But that's about it. Thanks for your time. OK, take care. My name is Paul Finneger. I'm an auto mechanic, and I'm from Scottsville, New York. Bonjour, mon nom c'est Donald Lambert from Saint-Gilles, Québec, and I am a solution technical specialist. Last heat of the zero, 81 cc modified chainsaw, Fanager versus Lambert, 526 time to beat. We know that Donald Lambert made a couple bobbles there in his cut, so if these guys have a perfect cut, they can get it done faster. And there it is, Don Lambert 4.0. So you got to be looking forward a little bit to a race against Donald Lambert, and uh, just tell me what didn't go right there. I uh, was trying to go a little too fast, and I just took my eye off the handle for a split second, and I bumped it off. And with these uh, 0-81 hot saw races or modified saw races, uh, that's going to cost you? 
Yeah, I probably won't place in the event. Yeah, just that little mistake. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Well, when you got a category of the 0 to 81 modified chainsaw, you're pretty confident that a French Canadian is going to be top of the field. Donald Lambert wins with a 4.06 in the modified chainsaw. We are now heading into the women's single buck. We've got a great field of competitors. In total, we'll be showing you the top three heats. This first heat, Lavon Michelacci taking on Melissa DeCantis. Now, Melissa is one of the best in the college ranks the last couple of years. She's graduated to the professional ranks here in the single buck. Lavon Michelacci coming from Pennsylvania, done a lot of single bucking herself. Lavon's got her hands full. We saw Three, Melissa last two, year at the one. Dalhousie Agriculture Campus and uh, sawing and chopping. She was unbelievable there. She's got a big saw there, a lot of weight to pull, but look at the level pulling of Melissa, keeping it nice and straight, being coached there by Nick Hall. Looks like Lavon's having a hard time keeping that pace, and her saw's not dropping nearly as quickly. Melissa's doing a good job, great pace, using the whole blade. She's going through, she's down and off in 19.3. You got to be happy with that performance. I mean, nice white pine uh, there for the uh, for the single buck, and you got Nick Hall coaching you. That's your one of your strong events, isn't it? Yeah, it is my strongest event. Uh, it, was, it was really tough seeing the competitors before me get really stuck on the wood, but I think I was able to keep it pretty smooth. So I'm pretty happy with that cut. Now, uh, just at the end there, do you worry at all about hanging up? Because you know, a lot of people as they get towards the finish, sometimes it's a little bit of a hang up. You were smooth all the way through. Does that enter your mind at all? Yeah, it doesn't really. I think when I when I end up thinking about it, that's when I screw up. So as long as I focus. Focus on keeping consistent. I'm always fine. Thanks, Moo. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Lindsay Down. I'm a massage therapist. And I'm from Round Lake, Illinois. My name is Tracy Henning from Walworth, New York, and I'm a Zumba instructor. It looks like Melissa's got a great future ahead of her in Lumberjack Sports. Hopefully she sticks with it, especially in the women's single buck. She has the potential to dominate. This next seat, we got Tracy Henning on the right, Lindsay down on the left-hand side. Tracy Henning, she's a great single buck here. You see she's pulling the full blade, doing a great job here in this point. Oh, she hangs a raker. That's going to cost her a little bit. Lindsay saw it dropping a little bit more. She hangs up a little bit as well, but she's beating Tracy on the pace here, just keeping a faster pace. And Lindsay gets through the wood ahead of Tracy for the 18.75. Uh, pretty nice wood, but uh, yeah, a couple of uh, instances there, I guess, where you're wor you're pulling up on the saw, or what happened there about halfway through? Well, I think it's a combination of, I haven't changed my spikes on my shoes, so they're a bit dull, so my feet were sliding a little bit, but I've been really working on trying to cut my near wood, and that's probably what got me in trouble, is I wasn't cutting enough. Here we go, the final here, the women's single buck, Peg Engasser taking on world record holder Nancy Zaleski from Wisconsin. Right now, the time to beat is the 18.75 set by Lindsay Down, and her traveling companion right here, Nancy, they drive about 12 hours to get the Barry, Peg Angas are just down the road a mere five or six hours from Cortland, New York. Should be fresh, and of course, uh, Peg, no slouch at all in the single buck. She's going to give Nancy a race for money, but Nancy Zalowski, she's going to be the best in the business across the whole continent. And look at her here, putting a nice, smooth cut in. You see Peg Angas are struggling a little bit. I know she doesn't have a wedger here. Maybe <laughs> her husband, Dave, was not available at this time. Nancy Zalowski wins a women's single buck. A little bit of a situation at the very, very end where uh, it, it, a little bit of a break off, but uh, caused you a little bit of concern? Uh, no, I've done that quite a few times this year, actually. <laughs> it's Nancy trying to drive off that last stroke, and she doesn't quite have enough oomph to get the rest of it off, and, and I end up turning my hand just a little bit and snapping it. But I always manage to keep the saw on the block, so it's just that extra last get it off of. So I need to fix that a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Thanks. Well, the ladies' single buck is in the books. Good thing Nancy went back and finished that cut, making a complete cut, did a great job here, outpacing the field by more than three seconds. Here we are in beautiful downtown Barry, the shores of Kempenfeld Bay for the first ever Lumberjack competition at the Great Canadian Beaver Race and Festival. We are heading into the double buck. This is where the guys work in pairs, pulling the big, long, cross-cut, double bucking saws, and they're going to be cutting rods, two cuts, 15 inches of aspen. Right on, and it's firm aspen. We see that already, but you got to run the clock back a little bit farther to see that uh, Don Lambert, Gaston Dubray used to be world champions years ago. Had a little bit of struggle here lately, but now Paul Finnegers sawing with Gabe Darling, nice young team here, and they're going to give these French Canadians a run for their money. Now Paul's old partner, Wally Robarge, not able to make it to this competition. He's picked up Gabe probably this last six months or so, actually working all this summer. Once again, two cuts, both pair of competitors off to a good start. Looks like Gabe's doing a little bit of slipping and sliding on the right-hand side with his back foot. Look at this here. Gaston and Donald doing a great job here. They made a great switch from the first cut to the second cut. They're laying in a fast pace here. How about that? They've cut it off in 14.8. 
I'm watching that heat. Pretty close race with Gaston and Donald. I'm thinking if uh, both of you are wearing spikes, you're winning that heat. I actually had spikes on, but they're so rounded that they weren't really biting that good. And uh, with the prize money you're going to win today, uh, you're going to buy yourself a set of spikes? No. <laughs> would foot blocks or spikes help you out? Because uh, it seems to be a bit of a skating rink out there. Uh, it's a little bit of that. I mean, we ran through a nasty bit of wood, and I think that has a lot more to do with it than traction, really. I mean, if your feet are too planted, then you can't adjust your balance while you're sawing. Well, I'm sorry, but i got to disagree with Gabe on that one. Look at how many guys are not wearing spikes on a deck like this. They got schooled in the last heat by uh, Lambert and Dupere. They were wearing cleats on their feet. Usually they use foot blocks, and in this heat, you'll see JP and Dave, if they don't have foot blocks, they will be wearing cleats, so it's a huge advantage in the cross cut. Well, the team of Mercy Jew and the Double Buck, my God, they probably have the world record for setting the most world records in this event. They're taking on Waterfield and Sullivan. These two guys have not sawed a lot together, but they got a lot of experience combined. No slouches at all. Both of them really strong Double Buck cutters. And look at the pace they have here. Doing a great job. Looks like they're taking down the other Guys. Look at Jewett and Mercier struggling for the first cut. Opens the door for Waterfield and Sullivan on the left-hand side. They're going to be tough to catch now. They're going to win it. They're going to be off here at 14.7. So you're taking off Mercy and taking on Mercy and Jewett over there. Got to give you a little bit of incentive to go after it. Yeah, well, we, we just planned that. We wanted to make a good cut. Don't make a mistake on the switch because that's huge. Don't get in crooked. And obviously, that must be what they did. Got in crooked or something because uh, we beat them off, obviously. But uh, we were just trying to make a good, solid cut. We've never, this is the first time we ever saw it at a competition. So that's what we were trying to do. What a great time to get together up here in Barrie, Ontario. Mike Sullivan, Nathan Waterfield, sawing for the first time and winning it with a time of 14.73 seconds. And the crown, pivotal point today, focuses on J.P. Mercier and Dave Jewett. They're supermen in the double block together typically, but today they have a little bit of trouble and finish fourth place. And the overall standings here at the Great Canadian Beaver Festival and Race Lumberjack Competition. We got two Canadians and three Americans in a field chock full of great competitors. Right now, it's Donald Lambert chasing Nathan Waterfield. And Nathan Bucket Waterfield is a gas guzzler lumberjack of the day. He takes first place in the springboard chop and then wins double block with Mike Sullivan. He's on his way. And what another spectacular event up here in Barrie. This year, they supplemented the Beaver Racing Festival with a lumberjack competition with a whole lot of support from all kinds of sponsors. Lumberjack is sponsored by Echo, only professional grade with five-year warranty. Crown, protect, maintain, save. K100, make water burn. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. I'm a groundskeeper. I cut trees down. I'm a bush supervisor, maintenance supervisor. I'm a heavy equipment operator. I do field service. General construction. I'm a pipeliner. I'm an arborist and a logger. And I'm a Zumba instructor. And I'm a machinist. And I'm a medical technologist. And I work at Anytime Fitness. And I'm a cafeteria worker. And I'm an arborist. 